What's up guys? Today, I'm gonna share with you my first impressions of the Wacom One S standard tablet. Let's get right to it. The Wacom One S tablet is a compact but still suitable for sketching. Its small size actually works to its advantage. You don't need to stretch your hand to reach the edges of the drawing area. However, this does mean you'll be sacrificing some precision compared to larger tablets. One standout feature is the plus icons on the surface which mark the active drawing area. Any sketching outside the boundary simply won't register, so it's a clear visual guide for where your strokes will count. It also includes a helpful LED indicator system, white for fully charged and connected to your device via USB Type-C, orange for charging mode, blinking blue which tells that Bluetooth is on and ready to pair, steady blue if Bluetooth connection is established, this makes it easy to keep track of the tablet's status at a glance, whether you're using USB or Bluetooth connectivity. The first thing I did when I got the Wacom One S tablet was to boot it up, but the battery was low when it arrived, so I had to let it charge for about 30 minutes to get enough power to test it out. Initially, I assumed that the tablet would behave somewhat like a traditional mouse. With the mouse, if you lift and reposition it, the hardware resets, but the cursor continues where from you last left off on the screen. I thought that the Wacom tablet might work similarly, requiring you to drag the stylus repeatedly to navigate. But I was wrong. The Wacom One S is more much precise. Its active surface area directly maps to your screen. So if you move the stylus to the edge of the tablet, the cursor moves to the corresponding edge of the screen. To me, I find it weird because it doesn't act like a mouse, and it's a learning curve you have to adopt. Another first impression I had was curiosity about how far the stylus needed to be from the surface of the Wacom tablet for the cursor to appear on my monitor. After testing, I found that the stylus needs to be within about 1 inch of the active surface area for the cursor to track accurately. Now keep in mind that the tablet itself doesn't have a display. Everything you draw appears on your computer monitor. Fortunately, there's no noticeable delay between the tablet and your computer. It's responsive and seamless. When it comes to refresh rate, it depends entirely on your monitor. For example, if your monitor is capped at 60Hz, you won't suddenly experience 128Hz responsiveness from the tablet. Higher-end Wacom models may offer additional features, but with this one, you'll need to pair with a monitor for it to function properly. Just something to keep in mind if you're considering this tablet. I'll admit, there's an adjustment period when using this tablet, but thankfully, it's quick and doesn't take long to get comfortable with. One important thing to note, if you don't install the Wacom app for Windows or Mac and enable the force proportion setting, your tablet's surface won't match your monitor aspect ratio. This can lead to distorted drawings. For example, if your monitor has a 16 by 9 aspect ratio and you try to draw a circle on the tablet, it might show up as an oval on your screen because the tablet's active area is either stretched or compressed. To avoid this, enabling force proportion in the app ensures that the tablet's surface behaves exactly like your screen's ratio. Of course, this only matters if you plan to use the entire active area of the tablet. Overall, the drawing experience with the Wacom One S is quite nice. It offers pressure sensitivity which adds a natural feel to your sketches. However, tilting the stylus won't increase the ink density, so it's a bit limited in that regard. The stylus also comes with mappable buttons that you can configure through the Wacom app for Windows or Mac, allowing for customizable shortcuts. Speaking of stylus, Wacom includes extra replaceable nibs in case your current nib wears down from heavy use. One downside though is the top of the stylus has no functionality. Unlike higher end styluses, you cannot flip it upside down to use it as an eraser. If you need to fix mistakes quickly, you can remap one of the buttons to an undo function. It's not a deal breaker, but something to keep in mind. One of the main reasons I bought this tablet is its cross compatibility. Not only does it work with Windows and Mac, but it's also compatible with Android tablets and smartphones. If you're planning to connect the Wacom tablet to your mobile device, there's one thing to note. Since most home screens are in portrait mode, the tablet won't work on your home screen or in apps that only support portrait orientation. But don't let it discourage you. The Wacom tablet 
still works great with your mobile phone on apps that support landscape mode. It's perfect for creative apps designed for a widescreen layout, making it a useful tool even on mobile devices. But the real power of the Wacom tablet comes into play with 3D sketching or modeling. Using this tablet for sculpting characters or objects like airplane and houses is significantly faster and more intuitive than using mouse. The precision and natural feel of the stylus really shines in these scenarios, giving you a smoother and more efficient workflow. And don't forget, you can map the buttons on the stylus to customize shortcuts specifically for your 3D work. This can make tasks like switching tools or undoing actions incredibly quick, adding even more value to your creative process. Is it worth it? Absolutely. Though it's built from plastic and it doesn't have the features that higher-end tablets has, it's a good deal for a cheap $100 device. And the experience has been fantastic and it's already helping me take my skills to the next level. I'm genuinely excited about the things I'm going to create with this Wacom tablet. And if you share the same passion for creativity, I definitely recommend giving it a try. Of course, there are plenty of alternatives out there, so you've got options. My goal here was to simply give you some insights into the Wacom One's standard tablet and what it offers. And that wraps up my first impressions and review of the Wacom One's. Thank you guys for watching and I hope this helps you. This has been D from VLTV and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.